Hey, everybody. I know you're all at home, and uh, it's kind of a rough situation, but uh, Raffin here and I are going to try and bring a little bit of humor into this. As I call it the Sunday funnies. So <clears throat> you all know right now that Woodbridge is, a, uh, is an open-minded church and that uh, you can come in here, you can have any kind of background you want. I mean, we're all sinners. And if you look back in history, probably one of the biggest sinners of all was Moses. Yeah, he's the only guy I know about that broke all Ten Commandments in one day. <laughs> Ooh, uh, so this, um, this sickness, this corona, has got everybody down pretty, uh, pretty uh, negative. And so Chris decided to write an upbeat song and put it out there on YouTube. And guess what? It went viral. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, toilet paper. We don't have to worry about toilet paper here because we got these giant reels. And so that's just the way we roll. Oh, crickets. Uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about kids. Kids are the future of this church, and they're also filled with the most interesting perspectives. We were in the back room, and this little girl was drawing a picture, and her mom came up and said, hey, what are you drawing? And she said, well, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the mom says, well, honey, nobody knows what God looks like. And she didn't stop for a moment. She said, they will in a minute. <laughs> So uh, let's talk about money. You know, churches operate on funds, and it's uh, been going like that for a thousand years, tithing and everything else. So that uh, it's really important. And uh, if you look back in history, you find one of the first real gurus of finances was Noah. Yeah, he was floating stock while everybody else was in liquidation. <laughs> So the basket comes down and put, people put tithings in, and one day this uh, nice young lady put a $100 bill in there. And the um, worship leader, Pastor Dusty, saw that, and he says, stop the music. Young lady, he says, that is very impressive. In fact, uh, we'd like to recognize you uh, for such a donation, and we'd ask you to, to you know, go ahead and pick three hymns. So she was really embarrassed. She stood up and she said, okay, I guess I will. Uh, him, him, and him. <laughs> okay, you all are now ready for a limerick, and uh, don't worry, this is family friendly. There was a young man from Ranger to Woodbridge. He was not a stranger. While dodging the virus, he decided to wire us, thus tithing and missing the danger. That's my two saints worth. <laughs> This has been Sunday Funnies, and be sure to st stick around and, uh, for the service, and uh, you all, uh, God bless, and keep smiling. All right, good morning, Woodbridge. We're so glad you're here this morning and joining us online for our online service. If you guys would, worship with us this morning.
soul feels crushed and overwhelmed by the weight of the world. I won't fear. I won't be Your love is great. I'm broken. 
Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the uh, Woodbridge Church. I know that uh, you're not in a building, but you still are the church. Uh, many of you uh, may not know this, but when, um, when we uh, planted this church just over uh, three years ago, is that right? Three years ago? Yeah, just over three years ago uh, when we planted this church. Uh, one, one idea that we had was that we not meet in a building and we just begin to meet in homes. And so we decided not to do that and, and meet in a building, but we've always wanted everyone to know that the church is the people, not a building. And so now here we are. We got to have the best of both worlds. So everybody gets to see this. You're still the church. Uh, and, and this is just a building. I'm standing in a building talking to uh, the church. So uh, just a few things that we have to say before we get started. Uh, one is if you would rewind this video after you have played, I say rewind a video, that means I'm old school. If you would go back, uh, I know that in the introduction to this live stream, uh, there were announcements from the church. So if you would check those out, uh, Ranger, we really are doing our best to serve you as, as we are in some very difficult days, some trying times. Uh, please reach out to the church. Let us know how we can serve you, how we can help you. Ranger, I also want to say that we have seen many of you, and I'm talking to all of Ranger, not just the church, helping one another, and we're just so proud to be part of that. Thank you for what you're doing, and we really are impressed uh, by all of you. So, uh, so yes, please reach out to us. Also, if, uh, if you just have prayer requests or, or, or whatever uh, today, if you want to make a decision uh, for Jesus or just let the church know anything uh, that you're going through right now, please message us on Facebook, shoot us an email, uh, give us a call, whatever it takes. We want to, uh, we want to be with you as, as much as we can uh, while we are um, separated for the time being. So... Uh, yeah, I think that's what I have. Also, if uh, you would like to tithe, I know as believers, part of the way that we worship is with our tithe and offering. If you will go to thewoodbridgechurch.com, many of you may be watching this through thewoodbridgechurch.com and know that that's available if you're not. Um, 
you are able to tithe there. So there's a link that's pretty simple to, to do that, to, to get on there and tithe. Okay, I want to talk to you today out of Mark. Now that's in the Bible. The Bible is, uh, I know there's like one binding, one book that is uh, called the Bible, but that's actually a, a compilation of 66 books. Uh, the first 39 books are what we call the Old Testament, and so that is God. Uh, creating the world, choosing his people, promising that one day a Savior, a Messiah would come, and when that Messiah comes, that is the New Testament. That's where we are today, and don't worry, nobody expects you to be a Bible scholar today, Uh, so all the scripture will be on your screen, uh, on your phone or computer, however you are watching this, or tablet. All right, Uh, I'm in Mark chapter 8. There's also a parallel to this that's almost identical in Matthew chapter 16, but I've chosen to speak to you today out of Mark chapter 8. Now, um, we're going to stay in Mark chapter 8, a lot of opinions that are flying around in the world right now, and so we just wanted to let let the Lord speak and and just stay in in what he has for us. So that's what what we're going to be in, Mark chapter 8, verse 31. Uh, now, leading up to this, Jesus is with his, his 12 apostles, those who are following him closely. They're actually doing everything together in life. I, I mean, they're just inseparable. Where he goes, they go. Where he uh, takes a nap, they take a nap. You name it, right? They're, uh, they're, they're doing that. So, uh, as they are walking together in, Ma- in Mark chapter 8, now the chapters in Mark go quickly. Uh, They've already been together for some time, and uh, Jesus asks his uh, his 12, his 12 closest, his apostles, the disciples, he says, who am I? And Peter, one of the apostles, says, you are the Messiah. Now, this is the one that the Hebrew people had been looking to come, And, and Hebrew says, you're it, you're the Messiah, and Jesus says, you nailed it, don't. Uh, don't, don't tell anybody for now. And then uh, he begins to continue to teach them. And that's where we're picking up on this. So in Mark chapter 8, verse 31, then he began to teach them, Jesus teaching his disciples, that it was necessary for the Son of Man, the Son of Man, that's Jesus, because he was born from a human, to suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, be killed and rise after three days. Now, that's not a very fun teaching, all right? The, the apostles have just said, you're the Messiah, you're the one, you're the one that we've been waiting for, and the Messiah was supposed to come and be the king of kings. Now, when you're the king of kings, that means you're over everybody, and so they're looking for an earthly dominion. You're over everybody. Nobody can do what you do. You're the best, you're the one, and we're gonna be, we're gonna be in power because you're in power, and then he throws uh, this curveball at them. That actually, I'm going to suffer and die. That doesn't sound very king of kingish, you know. It, it, that, doesn't, that doesn't put us in the limelight. That's not, I don't get it. Now, Peter doesn't take this uh, very well because as many of us tend to do, we go, you know, you know don't sell yourself short, Jesus. I don't, I don't know that hard times have to come. And we, we tell ourselves that. And, and some people will, you know, even in the church will say, well, we're a Christian, so hard times won't come for Christians. Have you ever read the Bible? Hard times definitely come. And Jesus will carry you through those. He doesn't take you around them, okay? So the, we're, we are uh, in, in this COVID-19 crisis, and the church hasn't skirted around that. We're being taken through it just like Christians always have been. And so Peter, Peter's like, I don't think so. And I can relate. I can relate to Peter. He wants to give Jesus a pep talk, but, but, but Jesus isn't having it. So in verse 32, he spoke openly about this. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. See, I told you, Peter's not having it. Peter's trying to shut this down. Peter's trying to say, no, 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 Jesus, you're going to be healthy and wealthy and wise, and that's the way the church is, and that's the way that we are, and and you're going to do it, and we're going to do it with you, and everything is going to be good. But Jesus sees right through it. Now, just on the surface, it looks like Peter actually has a lot of faith here. And when you read history, Peter did have a lot of faith. He died for uh, he, he died for his beliefs. He died for his belief in Jesus and that Jesus was the Messiah. He never left this idea, this belief, this faith that Jesus was the Messiah. But he had to leave the idea 
that following the Messiah meant that there would not be hard times and suffering. Mark 8, 33, but turning around and looking at his disciples, he, this being Jesus, rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking about God's concerns, but human concerns. What did Jesus see wrong in Peter's statement? Well, he tells us. He said that Peter had a human concern. See, the Messiah is supposed to come and make everything good. Right? Right? But what is good? See, Jesus knew that the suffering had to come so that people would, would be invited into, so that the sacrifice would be made to usher people into the kingdom of God. And Peter's looking at the here and now earth. Jesus knew that no blood, no atonement, no sacrifice, no payment of sin. Peter's just looking at earthly kingdoms and Jesus is looking at a heavenly kingdom. Peter said, no, 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 you, you don't understand. This is not how we're supposed to do it. And Jesus says, no, you don't understand. It is through persecution, it is through suffering that this will happen. Now, that's not for every Christian. That was for these Christians. But read, and Christians will undergo persecution. And Peter had to learn this. And he took this to his grave literally because he was crucified for his faith. Now, Mark 8, 34, calling the crowd along with his disciples, he said to them, if anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me and the gospel will save it. And this is what you in the church sign up for. Have you ever seen a baptism at church or maybe you've been baptized before? So if I were to baptize you, uh, I, would, I would bring you, well, below the stage into a horse trough because that's how we roll and say, I baptize you, my sister, or I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in death. I hold you for three seconds so you can think about what that means. And raised to walk in newness of life in Christ Jesus our Lord, right? And so that's how we baptize, and what are we signing up for? I die to myself, and I come back like Jesus. Now, it's a symbol of being washed clean from my sins, but, but it's also a symbol of I've died to myself, and I come back somebody who follows your will and not following my will anymore, okay? So this is what Jesus said. If you want to follow me, you've got to lose yourself. So maybe you are awesome at something maybe you just you 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 just rock at this thing in life but jesus wants you to do this what should you do obviously when you say it like that pastor well i know that i should follow jesus but sometimes it's not so cut and dry and simple and jesus wants you to die to yourself and do his stuff instead of your stuff now what does that look like (sighs) sometimes it looks like a cut and pay And sometimes it looks like, uh, you know, like I have to move. I have to go over here. I have to do this. I have to be around these people. This, and th- th- this part of what God wants me to do is a little uncomfortable, and I, I, prefer, I prefer to stay over here, but Jesus says you've got to die to yourself and be about him. But let me tell you the good part of that that maybe you've never thought about before. When you die to yourself and you begin to serve him, It becomes all about him and not all about you. And the reason that that's a good thing is that takes the pressure off of you. When I'm living for Jesus, then I'm not the center of the universe. The weight of the world doesn't fall on my shoulders anymore. He bears the weight. I'm just following him. It makes life a lot more simple when I follow the teachings of Jesus. He leads me to peace. He leads me to righteousness. He'll vindicate me as long as I'm following his way. Everything is going to work out for my good, for his glory. It may not be a great process. It wasn't for Peter, but it worked out for Peter. He led thousands to Jesus, and he is in heaven with Jesus right now. He had to be crucified, but he's there now. So, Follow Jesus, die to self. It's hard for me to say as a pastor right now when so many of my friends, so many of the people that I love are struggling. Many of you are having to close down businesses 
uh, or, or maybe you are, are in the oil field and you don't even know if your business is going to exist much longer. Uh, you, you, you have a job, but you can't get there right now. You're trying to work remotely from home or what? Just a, a myriad of things that are going on. And it takes a lot of faith for me to be able to tell you and encourage you, it's going to be okay, but church, it's going to be okay. Jesus has always taken care of his people. It's going to be okay. You're going to be able to feed your kids. Even King David back in the Old Testament said, I've never seen the righteous forsaking or their kids begging bread. Jesus is going to take care of you. Now, if you're watching this and you're not a believer today, we love you. We're so glad that you're here. You're still our our friend. I can't offer you this kind of hope. I don't have that because the hope does not rely in me. All I can give you is Jesus. But in Jesus, there is that hope that it's going to be okay. So don't be like Peter and say, but God, what is happening right now? Because look at, look at my job and, and look at what's happening. And, and it's, you're justified for looking at things that way. But when Jesus saw that in Peter, he said, no, 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 get behind me, Satan, because Peter began to look at things with an earthly view and maybe you need to look at your circumstance right now and look at it with a heavenly view. I know that many of you are worried about the days to come and we're worried about finances and for crying out loud, we don't even have toilet paper, but you just got home and you started to homeschool your kids and you realized they, 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 they don't read. I didn't, even, I didn't even know that they couldn't read well. I'm around my spouse and I didn't even know that he had become so annoying. I didn't know that I don't even like her anymore. I, did, I had no idea we had nothing in common anymore. And we get to work on this. And so when we begin to look at these things through a, a heavenly realm, I've got neighbors I've never checked on. I didn't know. I'm calling, my, I'm calling my mom and aunt and uncle because they're elderly. I'm checking on them, and I never even asked them about their faith before. And the church is going to explode in the next couple of weeks because the church is out of the box, baby. We have been unleashed because so many things aren't hindering us anymore. And so look at this through heavenly eyes and say, God, you got me. So while I'm here right now, while we're in this predicament, how can I advance your kingdom? Because I know you're gonna take care of me. How can you use me? Church, you get to, you get to see a glimpse. I mean, it's just a glimpse of how people aren't running the streets trying to murder us anymore, but you get to see just a glimpse of how the early church expanded. They didn't even have the Bible for the first couple hundred years, but through their kindness, their deeds, their acts of service, and their news of the message and gospel of Jesus Christ, the church blew up. You get to do it. And we're not distracted by a building. I, I'm so pumped right now. We're not distracted by a building. You're inviting neighbors to your house. You're becoming the church. You just became a priest. Praise the Lord. Somebody give me a thumbs up. Whew. Okay. Now, Mark, chat. where was I? I don't, even, I don't even know where we are anymore. Next page. Here we go. Mark chapter 8, verse 36. This is good. For, ooh, this is good. For what does it benefit someone to gain the whole world and yet you, ooh, I love this passage. For what does it benefit someone to gain the whole world and yet lose his life? Let me ask you this. Whatever you're after. Maybe, maybe two weeks ago before any of the chaos hit our world, you were after something. If I could just get this promotion, if I could just get this job, if I could get my bank account to this point, then blah, 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 blah. And let me ask you, what if you get it? What if you get there soon? What if you get there? What do you have? What does it profit a man if he gains a whole world and forfeits his own soul? But you know, when the question is proposed to me that way, like, hey, what would you, what would you sell your soul for? Nothing, absolutely nothing. But it's never proposed that way, is it? What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but forfeits his own soul? It looks a little more like this. Hey, I've got, I've got this over here, and this represents, this table is going to represent my faith, or this is my family, or this is, these, are, these are the things that God wants me uh, to be about, these are the things that I don't want to lose. If I had to stand before God and he said, what's the most important things in your life? I would say, well, my faith in you and my family and, and the way that uh, everyone sees you through my life. And so this is it. This is what I'm holding on to. This is everything that God wants me to care about. And, and somebody says, well, what would, it, what would it take? What would you sell that for? I wouldn't sell it for a thing. But it doesn't look like that. Because I, I, I have to take care of them. Right? 
I mean, I, I got to go to work because I got to make money to take care of all these things. Like, Jesus, if you want me to, you want me to spread the gospel, like, I got to have some tacos in me to get some nourishment. You know what I'm saying? Like, and those aren't free. If you want, if you want me to take care of my kids, I got to go to work. You see, you see what I'm going with here? And so we have to go. And so uh, it's like, okay, all these things that, that I care about, I, I've gotten this offer, and, and I'm, I'm, hold on, I'm just going to leave you for a second, because if I can just come over here and, ah, look at this, and then I can bring it, and I can, ooh, look at all the kingdom things that I can do, look at what I can do for my family that, that never were, you know, were, were done for me. And then that begins to run out, and we say, all right, now hold on, I'm going to need a little more, because that, that went a little ways, but if I can just get a little bit more, I'm back. I'm back. And look at what this is going to do for us. For you, Lord, I got you, Lord, because you need me. See what I'm saying? We begin to get in this mindset. And then each time it takes, it takes a, a little longer, and I don't know if you can tell on video, but I'm holding up some $20 bills, but then somebody says, hey, hey, if you'll, if you'll stay a little longer, I'll give you the hundo, baby. I'll give you the hundred. I'll give you a little something bigger. So, oh, yeah, hold on. It's going to be a little longer this time, but I'll be back. And then... We come back with something bigger and better. But what's been happening over here while we were gone? Now, don't take this too literal. I mean, this is just an example. We have to go work. We have to do these things. I'm, I'm talking not necessarily about money. Don't get distracted by the green. I'm talking about priorities. I'm talking about leaving the things that God wants us to do. And, and eventually somebody says, hey, if you'll stay over here, baby, I'll give you the big ones. I'm going to write a check for some big stuff. And then we look and we go, man, this is, this is, this is grown up and, and this is now where I live and I really have no idea what's going on over here. And I said that I would never sell this for anything, but I find myself over here and I'm still attached in some way to this, but I'm loyal and sold out to this. Why? Because they gave me this. And here's the sad part. Maybe it was a little cheaper than that. Maybe it was this guy right here. <laughs> and I get so distracted over here that I have no idea what's going on over here anymore. What does it benefit you if you gain the whole world and forfeit your own soul? What does it benefit you if you gain the whole world but forfeit your children's own soul or my spouse's own soul or my neighbor or my community so here's what we try to do we go i'll buy it back i'll buy it back everything that i got it's nothing to me anymore i would give it all to get back over here and to bring back the things that god has brought into my life i'll throw this out the window and then you know the rest of the story god redeems god forgives this time that we're over here oh does god forgive the time that we're over here but we try to back buy back the time that was lost and while he redeemed your heart he'll redeem your soul you don't get that time back so how much does it cost to actually get me over well as it plays out i'm a lot cheaper than i ever thought i was check out mark eight thirty seven. what can anyone give in exchange for his life how are you going to get it back You would say, I would give everything to come back. And Jesus says, everything is what I asked of you in the first place. Remember? Earlier he said, die to myself. Come back for him. Don't be distracted by the goods. We have, and I, I'm, I'm so cautious of saying that the time that we're in is any kind of gift. But I'm saying you could use it. You could use it for your soul to get closer to Jesus, to bring your family closer to Jesus. We're here. We might as well do it to expand the kingdom of God and expand our families and their love for the, for the word of God. We've been saying, oh, pastor, I would, I would, I would read, but I just don't have, I don't have any time to do that. Maybe you do now. Maybe it's time to get closer to God. Check out Mark 8, 38, and then I'm gonna be done. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. But I would never be ashamed of Jesus. I would never do that. I've always told people that I was a Christian. I have no problem with that. Well, question. What if this was my spouse, but I lived over here, 
having an affair and said, oh, I love her. She's my, she's my wife. Awesome lady. But I was here. How would she respond? And we do that to Jesus all the time. If I did that for very long, my spouse would take that as a denial of our marriage. Even though my words speak it, I still live over here. My loyalties are over here. I think that God is calling his church home. He's calling his people home. And we think that Jesus wants to call you to himself. He's jealous. He wants you home. Maybe some distractions have been moved, and I'm not taking that as, as lightly. I'm not saying this is God's punishment in anybody. I'm not saying any of those things. I'm saying here we are. I'm saying here we are, and God wants you for himself. Watching a computer, phone, in pajamas, podcasting on the way to work. Would you pray with me? And, and would you send us a message? Would you send an email to the Woodbridge Church at gmail.com? Would you, would you get in touch with us if you believe God is calling me home and I need some help getting there? We want to pray for you. Jesus, we pray. We pray that you will reach out to your people, Lord. We pray that we will have the courage to follow you. We pray that we will have the courage to die to selves and never go through that road where we have sold, uh, sold ourselves, Lord, where we have forfeited our, 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 our souls, Lord. We want to serve you. We want to give ourselves to you. You're worthy of it. God, maybe somebody's watching this who's, who's never been to church, hasn't even entertained the idea of going to church, but maybe they're entertaining the idea of believing in you, accepting you. God, would you, would you <laughs> be with them? If that's you, would you reach out to your neighbor? Would you reach out to the church? If you have a Christian neighbor, well, they don't go to the Woodbridge Church. We don't care. If they can lead you to Jesus, that is the church. That's what we've been saying. Would you reach out to them in Jesus? Bring your people to you. Guide us through this, Lord. We want this virus eradicated, but we trust your judgment and your will, whatever you want. We want our people, Lord, our friends, to be able to have their jobs and not be unemployed and businesses not to have to shut down. But God, we trust you. We trust you. We know that you'll take care of us. So Father, we put our hands and and, and our, our, our souls into your hands and pray that you'll lead us through these days In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Everybody, thank you so much for joining in. We hope that you have a good week and join us right back here on a podcast. But you don't have to wait to join us in the church because you are the church. If you want to become part of the church, you find a Christian neighbor, you get in touch with us, and that is our passion. If we can help you, Ranger, we want to help you. We love you. Thanks for joining us. Have a good day.